All right, film geeks, today's class is all about Golda. Is this Helen Mirren's entrance into the 2024 Oscar race? Let's talk about it. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of All Right, Let's Talk About It. My name is Savannah. I am your host. I do film reviews and film industry commentary. There is a bird outside. I don't know if you can hear it. I thought something was broken. But anyways, yeah, welcome back. We are still in the upper part of the South. I'm still in South Carolina. I'll be here until this afternoon, and then I make my way to Charlotte, and I'll be there for about the next two weeks. So yes, sounds of the South. We will be hearing those for quite some time. So how was everyone? This has been a great week. Let me tell you, being here, I realized I haven't really been getting good sleep, and I think it has a lot to do with the heat wave that you know, New Orleans is still experiencing. I'm still getting notifications and text messages, you know, that I've signed up for from the city telling me to stay inside and stay cool and hydrated because it's a heat wave. Oh, I'm very grateful that I'm not down there right now. So it's, it's hot here, but it's not uncomfortably hot. Anytime someone looks at me and says, oh, it's so hot outside, I kind of look at them like they're crazy. But because it is so hot, my room doesn't cool down. I don't get the best kind of rest. I didn't realize I wasn't getting good rest until I got here and I was comfortable. So if I sound a little more mellow than normal, I, I'm still coming out of rest, still waking up. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to roll with it though. So hope everyone's doing wonderful. We're talking about Golda. So this is a movie. I can't remember if I saw the trailer in theaters or what, or how I found out about this. It, it must've been a trailer. Cause that's usually how I found out, find out about a lot of movies for right now. Anyway, that is going to change as we get into Oscar season. And I'm going to start doing a little more research just to find out what movies are vying for those, that statue. So we're talking about Golda. This is an interesting movie, movie starring Helen Mirren, who is absolutely wonderful. We love her. She's fabulous. She's been doing this for a very long time. One of those, you know, golden eggs of Hollywood, as I sometimes call them. You know, I, I kind of put her in the same category as like um, Judy Dench, uh, Meryl Streep. You know, just the, these classy women of Hollywood who just know what they're doing and they're not afraid to take risks or, you know, just completely transform and be something else unrecognizable. They're not afraid to take, you know, big parts and small parts. They're not too big for their own britches. You know what I mean? Because Helen Mirren is in this obviously Oscar bait of a movie, Golda. But earlier this year, she was in Shazam, too. You know, I mean, she's not afraid to just do the thing. She loves what she does. She's an actor's actor. She loves acting. But this movie right here, we're going to talk about it. So this is Golda, directed by Guy Native, stars Helen Mirren, Lee Schreiber, and a whole host of other people. This movie is a biopic about Golda Meir who was the first prime minister of Israel. Now, if we're all familiar, Israel is a very young country, didn't really come into existence as a sovereign nation it was they've always been a people group um the jewish people the people of israel like they've always been a people group but they did not really become a sovereign nation until after world war ii so a very young history as a sovereign nation and a lot of turmoil a lot of strife just to exist just to be now, this is about Golda Meir, who was the first female prime minister, it takes place during the Yom Kippur War. That's what this is about. Her role and her the actions and decisions she had to make during the Yom Kippur War, which happened in 1973, a very short war, was about 19 days long. So the timeline for this movie is relatively short. We start this movie off with her sitting in a hearing. We later find out at the end that she took the blame for something and just, you know, just decided to take it upon herself and take the risk. So she's sitting in a hearing, you know, trying to account or justify decisions she made during this war. And so the movie is essentially a flashback. This movie is about her sitting in front of a hearing, telling her story, and then the movie itself is that story. So kind of a flashback kind of movie. And, you know, this woman is no nonsense, tough as nails, but also dealing with a cancer diagnosis. And she smokes 
constantly. That's a big thing in this movie we see a lot of. And I think they kind of overdid that part was smoking being so prominent. I'm sure it was. Like, I'm not doubting that at all. I think it was just kind of overdone. Like, they, it wasn't subtle. It wasn't like it was just part of characters or part of the background or just part of the setting in general. Like, this is the times we were living in where people just kind of smoked in rooms. Um, I think it was just a little overdone if that makes sense. And she was always smoking. So Helen Mirren's character was always smoking cigarettes. It was just a little overdone. I think we kind of got the point that this woman is very stubborn. She does what she wants. She is, you know, one of the boys and smokes just like the men, one after another, after another, after another, in spite of her cancer diagnosis. And a doctor even makes a remark that, you know, she's making his job harder. And... Where to even begin with this one? So I mentioned that this is a bit of an Oscar bait kind of movie, and I I definitely think so. This is definitely vying for something. I don't think it's going to get as much as they think it will. So we could talk about the acting, but we're going to skip that to the last. The movie in and of itself, minus Helen Mirren, because she's fabulous. She's wonderful. We love her, right? The movie is kind of lackluster. And I've used that word a lot the last couple of episodes, but I'm trying to find, I need a thesaurus at this point, just to find another word to really describe it. But I think that's just a good word for this movie. It's been like that for a lot of movies I've seen, just lackluster. Um, There really isn't much, in terms of a narrative structure, this movie is very episodic, which is a word I've also used before, but really this movie just kind of chronological, it just details a series of events. There really isn't much of a story that kind of ties these events together. Normally when you have a historical narrative, you have, you're showing what's happening in history, but you pick something, something within that narrative to build the story around. That's not happening here. We're just seeing a series of events. And it's interesting, don't get me wrong, because it's a different kind of war movie. We're not seeing battles. We're not on the front lines. We're not seeing the casualties of war. We're simply hearing about it. Where we are in this movie is the behind the scenes. We're in the rooms where decisions are made. And then they get to see and hear the consequences of those decisions. So I think that's what makes this movie a little bit interesting. I just wish they had picked something within that to build the story around, even if it was, say, her cancer diagnosis or just, you know, her being a woman in this environment, what that looks like in Israel. I'm sure the culture and the expectations and even the gender roles are just a little bit different in this predominantly Jewish culture. You know, I I can't sit here and say, oh, it would have been like this, would have been like that. I'm an American, so I can only come from an American perspective. I think it would have been interesting to see what that dynamic looks like for women in a Jewish culture. It would have been something new, something different, something that we have not really been exposed to before, unless you are heavily involved in like Jewish culture, Orthodox Jewish culture, Hasidic culture, so on and so forth. But I think that would have been an interesting angle to go, but they didn't pick an angle. They just gave us a series of events and showed them on screen. There was no story. It was very kind of, it was flat. There was no climax. There was no rise and fall. There's no denouement. Just, you know, very simple exposition, very simple ending. You know, we get the very beginning where she's talking about, you know, how she has to justify these decisions. We see the day or so leading up to her, the war happening. And then we get a, get a piece of, her death, how she died basically from her own cancer. Like that's pretty much what did it for her was the constant smoking, what it did to her organs and whatnot. But we do know at the very end, she did see peace. She got to witness things that they didn't think would ever happen between Israel, a Jewish state, and then, you know, Egypt, a very Arab nation and just the peace and the accord there. So we do know that she got what she wanted at the end of the movie. Like we we know she has kind of a goal, and a desire within this whole war. And then we see at the very end that goal was accomplished and they could have built the story around that, but they didn't. Instead, it was just a little plot point, just just a little something. And I think if they had taken that one thing, this this desire to have Israel recognized not as a Zionist nation, but as as Israel, I think they could have built something off that, but they didn't. So my biggest frustration with this movie was just that there was no narrative structure in terms of a traditional narrative structure. It was just a series of events. It was almost kind of like a documentary, but even a documentary has a rise and fall. Even a documentary has one specific point or one specific line they're building a story on and they wrap it around that way. 
the first thing that comes to mind, I know this is kind of childish, but it's the Justin Bieber documentary from however many years ago. And it's basically a documentary about his life up until that point. But the entire story is built around the Madison Square Garden performance, which at that time would have been his biggest performance to date. That's one of the pinnacles of being an artist is selling out Madison Square Garden. I mean, it's legendary, right? So, you know, we have this story that's about his life, yet the entire story is kind of built around this Madison Square Garden performance and the leading up to it and then the final happening of it. And I think that's what makes that documentary so special and so beautiful is while we are seeing a chronological event, the chronological events of his life, and many of us at that time knew a lot, knew a lot, but we we still got a story out of it, right? There's really not much of a story. That's my biggest issue here. And I think that's a bit of a writing issue. I don't think it's so much a direction issue. Um, Even though the writing in itself is just you know, beneath, it's beneath the caliber of the story, if that makes sense. The direction here, I think, is wonderfully done. I think the director in and of himself does a good job in spite of the story that he's working with. It, it's weird, right? So I, I think it's an editing problem. I think it's a, a writing problem. I think the director does a good job with what he's given. The direction in itself was good. The cinematography was good. The music in this is absolutely amazing. Now, this is a historical biopic, but it can also be classified as a thriller. And I think that's kind of the um, the angle they're going here is pushing it more towards the thriller side, getting you to feel the anxiety and the terror and the emotions that come with having to make these life or death decisions for men that they never see. For men, they don't know. Um, we do get kind of an emotional tie because there is a woman who seems to be either a journalist, stenographer, um, a record keeper of some kind, and her son is on the front line. So we get this emotional connection to what's happening on the front line through her. So that was well done. But it's just this movie could have been excellent. It could have been the, the, everything was right except for just the narrative structure. That's where it falls for me. But other than that, let's talk about Helen Mirren for a hot second. What a performance. So they completely transform her. She's unrecognizable. They have her in a complete bodysuit, including a prosthetic nose. She looks like someone who doesn't, she doesn't look like herself. You know, she looks like someone from that time period in that location. I mean, I think a lot of people get really upset when it comes to anti-Semitism and, you know, Jewish stereotypes. But here's the thing. Ethnic Jews have a very distinct look. It's not an ugly look. It's not a bad look. I think it's beautiful. I think it's absolutely incredible. I think they're a very beautifully, strikingly stunning group of people. And even as they get older, it's very distinct. There's a story in their eyes that's unlike any other ethnic group as far as I'm concerned. I think they do a very good job of showing a story in her eyes, in the lines in her face, in just the way she walks and the way she talks and her posture. I think they did a very good job in the in the makeup department kind of showing a story on her face. I thought that was beautiful. It, it, it was a little overdone at times. It's weird. I, I know it's weird. I'm saying it's, it was wonderful. It was good, but it was kind of overdone at the same time. I don't think they're going to get any awards for makeup or costuming, but I think Helen Mirren definitely has a shot at a nomination for Best Actress. In spite of the lacklusterness of the movie, in spite of some flaws here and there, her performance outshines everything. It makes the movie worth watching. Is her performance? She's very. She. She's what I'm looking for right now in a female protagonist. I've, I've talked about this quite a bit. How so many movies, it seems, just don't know what to do with female characters, and that has a lot to do with the culture that we're living in. It's kind of crazy though, because men don't really have these same expectations now. Men in a lot of movies, they're just being stripped of their masculinity. They want men to be everything but a man, if that makes sense. They want them to be as close to a woman as possible. It's like we have to take these two opposite sexes and genders, men and women, and we have to force them to somehow meet in the middle so that there's no difference. They're basically the same, completely just stripping men and women of what makes them different and what makes them special. Men and women, we're different. We operate differently. We think differently. We go about the world differently. We're treated differently. And these differences are not bad things. They're beautiful things. And it's taken me a long time to really embrace those differences, these things that just are innately woman about me. And I think this movie really does a good job. And I'm very happy because they could have. With the culture we're living in, you know, there's so much pressure to just strip women of their femininity in film. But this, I think, the joys of having an independent production, you're not so beholden to these Hollywood rules. You can pretty much do what needs to be done and do whatever you want in the process. 
So we have this woman who is in charge and she's leading things and she's making these tough decisions. She has these men who could literally just be her grandsons. They're that young and she's having to lead them and guide them. And they're having to look at her as a respectable authority figure, while also at the same time, not really respecting her as a prime minister because she walks into the room and they stay seated. They don't acknowledge her. She makes a comment at one point. She says, when I was young, you know, they stood up for the prime minister. They don't do that for her. But yet when she sits down and she speaks, they listen and they honor her in that way. It's, it's it's this kind of dichotomy that I really appreciated. And she also, they in, in, in addition to them making her this very tough, you know, leader figure, they also make her a woman. She's very nurturing. There's a mothering quality about her in the way that she interacts with these men. At one point, Leif Schreiber's character, who plays Henry Kissinger, Secretary, Secretary of State at that time, um, she you know, sits him down and makes sure that he eats. It She, she makes sure that he eats. It's such, it's a very woman thing to do. It's, it's a very nurturing thing to do. I don't know where it comes from or why. I'm like that at times because I do youth ministry. So I have certain kids. I know when they're busy, they're going about, they're, they're doing big things or, you know, they're serving here or there. Sometimes they don't get a chance to eat. So I would stop them and ask, like, did you eat? Are you hungry? Like, make sure you get something to eat. You want something to drink? Like, it's just that nurturing, wanting to care for people, kind of quality. And I think that's what makes her such an incredible leader, this sense of natural empathy that just comes from being a woman. Not to say that men can't be empathetic, but there's something different about it in women. There's just something different about it. And I'm very grateful and appreciative that they kept that. This film, I think, is a good example of what it means to have a female protagonist, that we don't have to be one or the other, and that one is not better than the other, that a woman who is nurturing and empathetic and sweet or whatever, she's not weak, and a woman who is just, you know, all balls and no heart, that's not, you know something to aspire to be. There is a beautiful middle within womanhood that we can portray on screen that Hollywood, for whatever reason, has been running from. So I appreciate this movie for showing the all-encompassing nature of what it is to be a woman. And Helen Mirren does such an incredible job portraying that. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm kind of sick of it, honestly, just the way women are being stripped of their femininity, men are being stripped of this, their masculinity, and this shows a beautiful middle within womanhood. And I appreciated it. Even in the male characters in this movie, we get that beautiful middle of men who can do this and they can do that. It doesn't just have to be one thing or the other. We don't have to look at femininity in women being a bad thing or masculinity in men being a bad thing, but we can see how it all kind of merges together. So I th- thought the characters here were very well-rounded. That was something that was done right. Golly, I wish they'd done more with the narrative structure of this movie because the characters were well-written, well-done, well-rounded. We didn't have these two-dimensional uh, supporting characters, which I've seen a lot of in movies, where you have one person who seems to be carrying the entire film and everyone else is just a prop. Whereas you have Helen Mirren, who is clearly the movie, she is a star here, and yet her supporting cast is doing just that. They are doing their job. They're well-rounded. They're written well. The narrative structure was just off. That bugged me. But I think a case can be made for Helen Mirren to receive a Best Actress nomination. Whether at the Oscars, Golden Globes, SAGs, one of those. You know, the Golden Globes and the SAG Awards, there's definitely more room for nominations because they split drama and then musical and comedy. Then you go to the Academy Awards and it's all combined. So I think there's definitely an opportunity for her to be recognized for what she's done in this movie. Everything else, not so much. The music, maybe. The music, maybe. But everything else, I'm not so sure. All right, parental units, is this movie appropriate for your children? I don't think your elementary school kids are going to get anything out of this, probably not even your middle school kids, unless they're very history inclined. This is definitely more for high schoolers and older, just the subject matter in general. I mean, again, this is a historical biopic about a relatively 
I don't want to say unknown war in terms of like, I can only speak for like American kids who grew up in the public school system. This is not a war we would have focused heavily on. We would, we would have learned about it um, definitely because there was an American role in this ro- war. So we would have learned about it, but it, it wasn't something that was, would have been heavily pressed upon while we were in school. So it's one of those things we would have learned about really quick. And unless we kept doing a de- deep, you know, a deep, a deep dig. Oh my gosh. What am I trying to say? a deep dive into it. Um, it's one of those things we learned about and then forgot. That makes sense. So it, it might go over your kids' heads in terms of the subject matter. So I don't know if I would buy a ticket, but I think if you're a high schooler, they should be all right. There's nothing sexual in this movie at all. It just deals with very heavy themes, you know, war, death, casualties in war, the consequences of war, um, a lot of smoking, like I said, this movie is rated PG thirteen mainly for that. But other than that, I mean, it, it's your kid. If, I mean, if you're watching this in home and your kid is sitting next to you, they're going to be fine. But in terms of what's appropriate for your child or whether your child is going to re- be able to understand what's going on, they're going to be able to engage with it. Um, I would say definitely thirteen and older, in terms of being able to engage with the content within the film. Other than that, I mean, it's fine. The PG-13 rating is mostly for, you know, thematic elements and smoking, a lot of smoking. But other than that, yeah, you're good. You're cool. It's a good little history film. So I think while this movie doesn't lack a bit of a narrative structure, I think this will be a good movie to watch in a history class, if that makes sense. Want to advertise on this podcast? Check the episode description to see how you can be featured on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to me rant and rave about yet another movie. So just to sum it up, that was Golda starring Helen Mirren. While I do believe she gives an Oscar worthy performance, I think the movie in itself just falls flat of her caliber, if that makes sense. Very lackluster, kind of episodic, not much of a narrative. There's no kind of center of gravity within the film in terms of a story or a plot. It's just a series of events, but she gives an incredible performance. We love her for that. So what What's coming up next? Well, at right after this review, you should be getting a review for The Hill, which is a faith-based sports film. So be on the lookout for that. I will be doing a lot of work while I am this part of this. It's weird to say, I can't say down south because New Orleans is down south. I What am I, up south? I don't even know. Uh, it's, it's, it's a different kind of south. East coast? There we go. Because New Orleans is Gulf Coast. I'm back on the East Coast. There we go. Close enough anyway. I mean, Charlotte is, you know, three hours away from the beach, give or take. So, yeah, that's what's coming up is look out for a review for The Hill. I will be seeing Equalizer 3 next week, which means I have to see Equalizer 1 and 2. I know 2 is available somewhere. 1, I might just have to rent temporarily. Not that big of a deal. So yeah, that's what's happening. Next week is Equalizer 3. And then I think after that might be, I mean, Expendables maybe this week the release dates have gone through a shift and we'll talk about that another time but that's what's coming up thank you so much for tuning in don't forget to like comment and subscribe and share thank you so much let me know what you thought if you've seen the movie if you plan on seeing the movie if you know anything about this wonderful historical figure share a favorite fact share something that i as an american student probably wouldn't know that would be wonderful. Um, that's the way history is, no matter where you are. History is always going to be centered or wrapped around your current location. So if you're in Panama, you're going to learn Panama-centered history. If you're in America, you're going to learn American-centered history. If you're in England, you're going to learn England-centered history. So tell me something that I, as an American, probably wouldn't know. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.